वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय सो टुडे वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम कैंटर टेन चैप्टर इलेवन द चैप्टर एंटाइटल द चाइल्डहुड पास टाइम्स ऑफ कृष्णा टेक्स नंबर फिफ्टीन टू सेवेंटीन सो विल रीड आउट टेक्स फिफ्टीन कृष्ण कृष्णारविंदाक्ष ताते ही स्तनम पिब अलम विहारे क्षुत क्षंत क्रीडाश्रंतोसी पुत्र का कृष्ण कृष्णारविंदाक्ष ताते ही स्तनम पिबो अलम विहारे क्षुत शांत क्रीडाश्रांतोसी पुत्र कृष्ण कृष्णारविंदाक्ष ताते ही स्तनम पिब अलम विहारे क्षुत शांत क्रीडाश्रांतोसी पुत्र अलम विहारे क्षुत शांत क्रीडा शांतो सीवी पुत्र कात ही स्तनम पिब अलम विहारे क्षुत शांत क्रीडा शांतो सी पुत्र का माताजी कृष्ण कृष्णारविंदाक्ष अलम विहारे क्षुत शांत क्रीडा शांतो सी पुत्र का वर्ड टू वर्ड मीनिंग कृष्ण कृष्ण अरविंदाक्ष ओ कृष्ण माय सन लोटस आइड कृष्ण तात ओ डार्लिंग ए ही कम हियर स्तनम द मिल्क ऑफ माय ब्रेस्ट पीब ड्रिंक अलम विहारे After this there is no necessity of playing Shuta Shanta tired because of hunger Krida Krida Shanta fatigued from playing Asi you must be Putra ka oh my son Translation by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Mother Yashoda said My dear son Krishna Lotus-eyed Krishna Come here and drink the milk of my breast My dear darling You must be very tired Because of hunger and the fatigue of playing so long There is no need to play anymore So we have two more verses. So I'll just read out the 16th and 17th verse. He Rama Gacha Tata Shu Sanu Jhakula Nandana Pratareva Kritahara Stad Bhavan Bhoktur Marati Arhati 
translation my dear baldev best of our family please come immediately with your younger brother krishna you both are in the you both ate in the morning and now you ought to eat something more text number 17 pratikshate twa darshah bhoksham ano brajadipa ehavayo priyam dehi swagrihan yat balaka translation translation and purport by his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami shri prabhupada translation nand maharaj the king of raja is now waiting to eat oh my dear son balram he is waiting for you therefore come back to come back to please us all the boys playing with you and krishna should now go to their homes purport it appears that nand maharaj regularly took his food with his two sons krishna and balram yashoda told the other boys now you should go to your homes father and son generally sit together so mother yashoda requested krishna and balram to return and she advised the other boys to go home so that their parents would not have to wait for them om ajnati mirandasya gyananjana shalakaya चक्षुरम मिलित ये नस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतनमनोभी स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदाम्यहम कदा स्व कदाक वंदेहम श्रीगुर श्रीयुत पदकमल श्रीगुर वैष्णवांश श्रीपम सागर जात सहगण रघुनाथ वित तम सजीव साध्वेत साधूत परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्ण पाद सहगण ललिता श्री विशाखा वित हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमस्तुते त्वप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदवनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाछाकलपतरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नमो विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण प्रेष्टा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासादी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Hare Krishna I like to seek blessings from all the assembled vaisnavas so I can speak something sensible for my own purification especially from his grace shankarshan prabhu and her grace sachi mata so the story line goes like mata rohini and yashoda had cooked the lunch prasadam for lunch for krishna balram and uh, rohini mata mata rohini had gone to call krishna balram who were who were playing at the banks of yamuna with their friends but she was unable to call them so she sent yashoda that they didn't come by my calling so you are you are so affectionate to them so please you go they will definitely come when you will call them so mata yashoda goes goes to banks of yamuna and she is calling out krishna's name krishna krishna please come and simply by calling the names of krishna that affection which she had for krishna takes the form of the milk from her breast and the milk flows out from her breast that is the affection of mata yashoda for krishna 
So she is calling Krishna and simply by speaking the names of Krishna, the ocean of aff affectionate emotions takes the form of the milk and that milk flows from her breast. So she is telling Krishna, uh, Krishna that please come and please drink this milk. Actually nowadays if you see, there are mothers who also have the special affection for Krishna. They all have special affection. But Mata Yashoda was unparalleled. She was having a special mercy from Krishna. Actually in the ninth chapter there is a verse which says that, in the ninth chapter of same same canto, it says that even uh, Lord Brahma, the creator, who was the son of Krishna, and Lord Shiva, as Prabhupada mentions, he was a friend of Krishna. And Lord Krishna's concert even, she who resides on the chest of Krishna, they were also not that fortunate to get the mercy of Krishna, what Mata Yashoda has got. So Mata Yashoda's love for Krishna was so special. But today's mother, they have that special love for their child. But still, th th sometimes they struggle to get the breast milk for their kids because of that lack of affection. Milk doesn't come out of the vit vitamins or calcium or iron. It is only the affection of mother which gives the rise to the milk in the breast. Even Krishna was not sucking the breast also the, and the milk was flowing from the breast of Master Yashoda. That was the affection of Mother Yashoda for Krishna. So Man Maya was realizing that that milk was flowing. So she called Krishna and he, she was telling that, please come and drink this milk. But Krishna was not listening. She tried, earlier she tried only calling names, it didn't work. She told him to come and drink the milk, that also didn't work. Krishna, net, Krishna didn't come. And then she is telling that come, she is expressing the worry that you, are, you and Balramji will be tri tired of playing. You have been playing from morning, that fatigue of trial, uh, fatigue must have made you tired. So please come, please come and you, you might be hungry also. Please take this, uh, come to have the meal at home. So, but Krishna was not listening. She, he was not paying attention to Yasoda. In spite of she was pleading so much. And, and Mata Yasoda then says that typical word that all the mothers say, that patent word, no need to play, come back. Almost every mother must have spoken to her kid. She says, but no response from Krishna. So Mata, uh, Mata realized that Krishna is so naughty, he will not listen from me. Now she is addressing Balramji. She is addressing Balramji and she is telling that, that Krishna is small, he is young, he is mischievous, he is not listening, but you are elder to him. You are intelligent and she is addressing him as best of our family. She is telling him, best of our family, please t get Krishna with, along with you and come to take prasadam, take, take food with food at home. But then that also didn't work. None of them came, no Krishna, not Krishna also and no Balram also. Because they were enjoying playing with the cowherd boys that they were so engrossed in that playing that they didn't want to come back home. So now yes, Mata Yashoda had used all her means to call, she requested, she told, she, f she actually buttered Balramji, she did everything but nothing worked. So and ultimately she is telling, actually normally kids don't listen to f mothers but when the name of father comes, they are disciplined. So she is now saying that Nandu Maharaj is waiting for you, the king of Raja, he is waiting for you. So at least by that threat of father, they might come. So she requested them that Nandu Maharaj is waiting for you, please come and take lunch with him because he, is, he, he always take lunch with you. So please, he is waiting for you. It's not good to make your father wait. So please come. But then also, they don't listen. They don't listen to Mother Yashoda. She tried all her means, she was so patient. She was, so many times she was pleading, but she didn't lose her anger. She was so patiently, she was requesting. But nowadays if you see mother calling the child once or twice, if he doesn't listen, immediately she uses the force. 
either physically or by threatening him, they pull him, pull them. But Mata here, she knows that Krishna can be bound by only love and that only can bring him here. So then ultimately, she is using the last weapon. She is telling that all of you stop playing, not only Krishna Balram. She thought that if Krishna Balram, they might think that we will lose something, the game or something, or we will miss something, so they might not come. So now all of you stop playing. All the boys, you also go to your homes and take lunch with your parents. She is requesting them and she told them. So here it's recommended, uh, it's, uh, Prabhupada writes in the purport that Krishna Balram, even Nand Maharaj used to take pr- food with, uh, their meals with Krishna and Balram always. He used to take. So if you see the dietitians and naturopathies, they also recommend that the family should take food together. But that is only for the maybe physical or at the most mental well-being. But taking prasadam at home with the family gives the spiritual benefit also. So that is why Krishna and Balram also used to take prasadam with mother, um, uh, with father Nanda Maharaj. In the modern day parenting also they give the seminar, they say that at least one meal a day a family should take together. But the lifestyle which we are living in Bombay and especially in the cities, it's very difficult for the parents to have meal with the kids. It's forget once a, once a day, once or twice a week is also very rare. And that also turns out sometimes in the restaurant, which is not a prasad. So that is the gift of the modern so-called urban development, what we have given to our kids. Once Arudha Mataji had come to her temple and she was giving the seminar on homeschooling and parenting. And one of the Matajis, she asked the question to Arudha, Arudha Mataji that we have so many devotional services in our temple that we don't get enough time for our kids. And uh, Arudha Mataji gave a beautiful answer. In fact, she asked the question. She said, is raising children in Krishna consciousness not a devotional service? It was a real slap on the face of the parent who believed that preaching Krishna consciousness is important than raising children in Krishna consciousness. Actually, if you see, your preaching won't affect if you are not practicing it. If you are not practicing to raise Krishna consciousness, Krishna conscious children with your responsibility, your preaching won't work. Once Radha Gopinath Prabhu recently he was giving class and he was quoting one Christian priest who says, preach, preach, preach and if necessary sometimes speak. So what is that? Your action should speak louder than your voice. Uh, words. Actually, if you see, the people get attracted by seeing the Krishna consciousness family happy in Krishna consciousness. Simply your philosophy and words won't attract them. The practical demonstration of Krishna consciousness, the happy family of Krishna consciousness, that attracts the most. Ultimately, people like peace and happiness. So that if they see that devotee of Krishna are always happy with the family. They get attracted and take to Krishna consciousness. So to make this first and foremost, we should spend time with our kids. That actually we are missing. Because we don't accept the responsibility which we have taken. Rishabdev tells in the fifth canto of Bhagavatam, Guru na sasyat, svajano na sasyat, pita na sasyat, janani na sasyat, devam na tatshyan, na patit cha sasyan, namo ya cha ched ya samupet amrityam. One who cannot deliver his dependent from the path of repeated birth and death should never become a spiritual master, a father, a husband, a mother or a worshipable demigod. So one should not take the responsibility if he is not able to justify that service of becoming a parent. In Gita also Krishna writes, in the purport Prabhupada writes that one is not allowed to indulge in sex 
if he is not able to beget a Krishna conscious child. So you are allowed to have the sex affairs only if you are able to raise your child in Krishna consciousness. To raise a child in a normal proper behavior and intellect also take a lot of effort and what to speak of raising him in Krishna consciousness. There is an African proverb it says that it takes a whole village to raise a child. That is the effort what is put to raise a child. So, but today's parents, they are small families and even in that small families, they have small time. They don't have time for their parents, for their kids. And in fact, in the parenting also, they say sometimes that when the kid grows up little, when he's in the nearby his teenage, you should give him some space. But what space actually? Giving space is not to make him independent. Giving space, in the name of giving space, people are hiding their deficiency of time. They just give their child away to the tuition classes, to the other, other activities he indulges in. Giving space means to just give his, uh, to express his, whatever feelings he is going through. That is real giving space. And not just live him, but that is actually the happening that all the parents, they just give that, the laptop, the mobiles and the gadgets, that they get engaged in that and the kids don't disturb them in their day-to-day -day activity. That is what it is given. That is this feel that this is giving space. That is not giving space. You are spoiling your child in fact by giving all that. And in fact in the vacations and holidays, the many parents they complain that it's very difficult to engage their kids. And that is why they give that DVDs and videos and CDs and they get engaged in that and they don't disturb. But that is not the right way to engaging them with all this. The mainly you can engage them in positive activities and for them, by that you need time. But that time is not there with the parents and that is why they give all these things to them. But actually these gadgets and this comfort, they don't make them happy. What makes them happy is the time which is given by parent to them, that love and affection which is given by parent to them, that makes them happy. It is not these gadgets and artificial things which will make them happy. But, but the parents think that I want to give my kid the very comfortable life and very, uh, all the things in the world, what we were not able to get, I'll give it to my child so he'll be happy. Actually, people, many people say that in my childhood I was not able to use all this, but now I sh I'll give everything to my child. But that is not right. The comforts and the facilities won't make your child intelligent or won't, won't give him the good grades. Actually, in Vedas, it is mentioned for human life, the four aspects, Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. So each of them have their own time. And it should not prematurely come. The, the, young, the younghood, till boyhood to younghood, it's meant for dharma and austerity and religion it is meant for. So, the kids or the youngsters are to be, uh, they should perform the austerities to get the knowledge. And when they grow up from younghood to boy, younghood to middle age, they are supposed to do kama and artha. So, earn money, and spend it, that is enjoy it. That's in and after that, in the last stage, after the middle age, they are supposed to be in to do the self, uh, endeavor for ultimate salvation, that is moksha. So that is what is required. They should perform the austerities, the kids should perform the austerities. The knowledge cannot come without austerities. The knowledge has to come with austerity only. With the air-conditioned rooms, air-conditioned classrooms, that doesn't give the good grades. And if you see the board results, the children who are studied in the street lights, they, come, they are the toppers. 
and not the ones who are studied in the air conditioned classrooms actually if you see creator lord brahma also when he when he was born from the navel of the lord he was bewildered and he also heard the voice tapah 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 and perform the austerities for thousands of years and all the knowledge was revealed to him so that is how the kids should be trained to do some austerities and that should be always under some authority like spirit, like father mother guru or spiritual master they should be always under some authority but on the name of giving them space they are thrown away independently and which is spoiling the whole youth if you see just couple of 3 4 days back i saw one newspaper article of one model shelin chopra she was she was writing that my father would have been proud today because she had given her nude photo in a playboy magazine she was thinking that my father would be proud of this that i have given the nude photo in the playboy magazine so that is what giving the space gives the independence gives the kids they take to this extent that is why ch- children should be raised with love and affection like what nanda maharaj and yashoda maiya were giving krishna and balram the full love and affection and time also people say that give quality time to kids forget quality time they need quantity they are greedy of time not called quality in only they need quantity also they need their parents always with them okay so today is the most auspicious occasion when shila prabhupad boarded jaladuta actually i was reading lilamrita and i was i found that chapter and the title of the chapter was dream come true it was really a dream come true not only the dream of prabhupad it was dream of mahaprabhu prithvi acheta de yad nagar adi gram sarvatta prachar hoy bo mera naam mahaprabhu wanted that his name should be broadcasted all over the world that was the dream of mahaprabhu and bhakti siddhan saraswati thakur also he was having dream and that is why he gave the order to prabhupad that print books and preach in english language to the western world and prabhupad also his life was his whole life he has dedicated to fulfill this one dream and that, that 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 particular dream came true this very day that he boarded the jaladuta if you see his life his whole life was the life of preparation if you want to discuss you have to discuss whole lilamrit but i'll start from where this chapter starts dream come true it's when prabhupad was in vrindavan in radha damodar temple he was translating he had chosen the best of the places in the world to write the translation and the commentary on shrimad bhagavatam the the samadhi stali of roop and jeeva the best place in the world where he could have written the translation so he was writing the translation and purport and he he had completed first almost most of the first volume and he he thought that only writing is the half battle the other half is publishing so publishing he realized that from vrindavan it was not possible vrindavan was good place and very adequate for him to translate but for publishing he had to go to delhi so he decided to go to delhi so there were there were many god brother of his who were actually discouraging him that why you are spending so much time and energy for writing this commentary there are so many commentaries of the previous acharyas on shrimad bhagavatam why do you want to write one more but prabhupad was firm in his determination he was his uh, he, he has received the order from his guru maharaj and he wanted to fulfill it he wanted that shrimad bhagavatam should be written in english and then he can spread 
Krishna consciousness to the Western world. But then, when he came to Delhi, he realized that the commercial publishers were not interested in the 60 volume Bhagavatam because it was too big for them. They said that nobody will read this. But Prabhupada didn't want to compromise. He wanted the parampara presentation of 60 volume Bhagavatam. And then he, got, he, he had some contacts in, in Delhi and amongst them one was Hitsharan Sharma. He thought him to be a helpful guy for publication because he knew that he was the secretary of J.P. Dalmia, the, the multimillionaire and a philanthropist. And he was also a owner of a press called Radha Press. So he thought that he will be the right person to help him. So he approached him. But then Hitsharan Sharma actually gave him shelter. He, he, he was staying at Hitsharan Sharma's place. He told him he, he wanted to help him. He tried to help him as many ways. But he said that if I simply tell Mr. Dalmia, he won't help you. So you should go to Gorakhpur and meet Hanuman Prasad Dal, uh, Podar and he will actually help you in raising funds from Dalmia. So then Prabhupada travelled 475 kilometers from Delhi and he was very much short of money. He was not earning anything. He was having only 130 rupees in his pocket and he went to Lucknow first and he was down to 57 rupees only in his pocket. And then from there to Gorakhpur was 8 rupees again. But it was worth visiting Mr. Podar. He explained his his, his, his dream, he wanted to write Bhagavatam and spread this message of Krishna consciousness to the western world in English. So then that person Hanuman Prasad Poddar, he appreciated the work and he concluded that this highly developed work and that it should be helped and it should be supported. So he then, he then arranged, this, arranged to send 4000 rupees to Dalmia Trust and it is to be used for Bhaktivedanta Swami's Bhagavatam pub publishing. Then Prabhupada came back to Delhi. He went to different printers. He didn't have that five, 4,000 rupees also were not enough to print the books. He, Prabhupada estimated at least 7,000 rupees to print the books. But then he had to go to different places to raise funds. He had to go to the printers to request them if they can start the work. During that days, the printers used to take some advance and start work and later on the debts were been cleared by the writer. So Prabhupada requested, he went to different different printers and he, had, he, he was not having money. He was literally tra traveling on by walking 2-3 kilometers because he didn't have money for taxis or bus. So he was in the scorching heat of Delhi. He was going hither hither. He was traveling so much. He was, he was old and not full and is not in great of his health. Ultimately, he, ha he by taking help of Hitcharan Sharma, he received. He went to OK Press and where he gave his gave them to publish the first volume, which he had written the manuscript in Vrindavan. And then, the after many after much of effort, he got hundred books. He had published 1,100 books, but the money which he had given, the printer only gave 100 books. And he had to distribute all that book, collect the money, then give, it, give, give his debts to printer and binder and get the books again. So that is how he collected all the books slowly and gradually. And simultaneously he wanted to meet the important people and present his books to everybody. And he, he happened to meet Dr. Radha Krishna who gave him the personal audience and agreed to read the book and write his opinion on the book. And Prabhupada distributed it to the major libraries, universities, schools, Ministry of Education, even US Embassy. He distributed it many places. And then he got many reviews from different people. And his God, scholarly God, 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 God brother, Bon Maharaj, he wrote, I have nothing but admiration for your bold and practical venture. If you should be able to complete the whole work, 
you will render a very great service to the cause of Prabhupad, Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj, Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the country also. Do it and rest assured there will be no scarcity of resources. Bhakti Saranga Maharaj, one of his other god brother, who used to write Sajjan Toshni, he also wrote in his Sajjan Toshni that we expect that this particular English version of Sri Bhagavatam will be widely read and thereby spiritual potence, the spiritual poverty of people in general may be removed forever. At a time when we need is very need is very greatly Srimad Bhaktivedanta Swami has given the right thing. We recommend this publication for everyone's serious study. Then he gave, he got the reviews from many people like Vishwanath Das, the governor of VP, then economic rev, uh, uh, review praised that author was attempting the tremendous task. And then he, he also got the review from Vice President Jaki Hussain. He said that, I have read your book, Srimad Bhagavatam, with great interest and, prof and much profit. I thank you again for kind thought which must have prompted you to present this to me. So this way he got, he collected many reviews, he collected the support of many people from Delhi and then he returned again back to Vrindavan to write the second, second volume. Actually he made the three volumes of the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. So he again went back to Vrindavan to write the se second volume. And then after writing some of the manuscript pages, he came back again to Delhi. And then again it was uh, a LH Sugar Factory, the executive of that company gave 5,000 rupees donation to Prabhupada to s publish his second volume. And this time Prabhupada was not, uh, not happy with how the first canto, the pace, at the pace which it went. Because it took almost 9-8 months, 9-10 uh, months to complete the first canto publishing. So he was not happy with the time. So now this time he personally was pushing people that it should quickly happen. And he was running around here and there. And people were seeing sannyasi going to printers and this. And Prabhupada might have thought that people must have been having a thought in their heart that why this sannyasi doing like work like raising money and distributing books, selling books. Why is doing so much? He is as good as us in the mendicant dress. That is why Prabhupada wrote in the preface to his second volume that, but actually there is gulf of difference between the two kind of activities. This is not a business for maintaining an establishment of material enjoyment. On the contrary, it is an humble attempt to broadcast the glories of Lord at a time when the people need it very badly. So even though we are not in Himalayas, even though we talk of business, even though we deal in rupees and paisa, still simply because we are 100% servant of the Lord and are engaged in the service of the broadcasting the message of His glories, certainly we shall transcend and get through the invincible impasse of Maya and reach the effulgent kingdom of God to render Him face to face eternal service in the full bliss and knowledge. We are confident of this factual position and we may also assure to our numerous readers that they will also achieve the same result simply by hearing the glories of the Lord. So he was assuring the readers that they will also achieve the same result simply by hearing. And in 1964 June, Prabhupada got the opportunity to meet the Prime Minister, then Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri and he presented this book to Lal Bahadur Shastri and Lal Bahadur Shastri said that Dear Swami, many thanks for your book. I am indeed grateful to you for presenting a copy of Srimad Bhagavatam to me. I do realize that you are doing valuable work. It would be good idea if the libraries in the government institution purchase copy of this book. And he gave the letter to Prabhupada and, and there was one photograph also of Prabhupada presenting the book to Lal Bahadur Shastri and both of them are smiling with Srimad Bhagavatam. So Prabhupada got that photograph also. And now he was concentrating on completing his third volume. So he returned to Radha Damodar temple again and started writing the third volume, which was having 
which was describing the dealings of advent of present age of Kali, the last part of the first canto. So now to raise the fund for the third canto, Prabhupada chose Bombay. Prabhupada thought that I'll go to Bombay and raise the fund for the third canto. Then he came to Bombay and he became a guest. He became actually came to Prem Kutir Dharamshala, a free ashram where he stayed. But then Mr. Dalmiya, the family member, he actually called and guest, he was a guest to them for 15 days. But now Prabhupada was having the foot, so many good reviews. He was having the photograph of Lal Badu Shastri. He was having the letter and the order of many, many big, big institutions. But still, in Bombay, he was finding difficult to raise the fund. So then he decided to meet Sumati Morarji. He had heard about Sumati Morarji from his godbrothers that she is a philanthropist and she has helped the Bombay Godiomat also. So he, had, he went to Sumati Morarji's office, but he failed, he, was, he failed actually to have a first meeting. But he actually waited at the doorsteps and he was sitting there for literally 5-6 hours, waiting that when Srimati Morarji will come back, when the, his, her day will be over, I'll meet her. And when Srimati Morarji came down, she saw a sannyasi sitting on the steps. She asked Mr. Choksi that who is this gentleman? And then she approached Ma Prabhupada and then Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, he asked her that she, he wanted the favor to print, publish this third volume of his first canto. And she called, she said that today is too late, please come tomorrow, we'll discuss. And then next day she, she, gave, she gave all the help she ne Prabhupada needed. She said that whatever you need, you can take. And she told Mr. Choksi to help Prabhupada. And then when he got the assurance from Sumati Morarji, he went back to Vrindavan and finished whole manuscript work. And, and that's the time of Janmashtami in Vrindavan. So he arranged the big festival at Radha Damodar temple. He called the governor of UP, Vishwanath Das, to be the chief guest for the program. And it was a very successful program on the Janmashtami. And government was, governor was so happy that he invited Prabhupada to his house in Lucknow. Prabhupada went there in Lucknow and there he had called many Kirtan singers also and one of them was Mr. Shishir Bhattacharya. He was a young boy, young flamboyant Kirtan singer and he, ha he happened to meet Prabhupada and he was very much impressed with Bhakti Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And Prabhupada also expressed that I want to go to West by collecting these funds, I'll just go to West and fulfill the desire of Mahaprabhu. Prithviyache Yatagi Nadaradi Gram Sarvatra Pachar Hoi Bhimaranam. See, afterwards Prabhupada finished his manuscript in Vrindavan and Bhakti, uh, Prabhupada went to Mathura and he met Mr. Agarwal there. Mr. Agarwal was a wealthy businessman in in Mathura and Prabhupada just gave a passerby message that your son is in US so please if you can sponsor my trip to US it would be very nice. He was not expecting something from Agarwal, Mr. Agarwal but he just say that, said that to Mr. Agarwal and he went to Bombay and when he, went, when he came to Bombay now he needed money to go to West. Now he wanted money to go to West. So he wanted to sell all his book and raise the fund. So he met Parmananda Bhagwani, a librarian in the Jaihind College. And he helped Prabhupada in to go to different shops and different ashrams. He went to a store, a popular bookshop in Grant Road. He went to Sadhu Vila Ashram near Mahalakshmi Temple. He went to different places. But Prabhupada didn't got much response. People were not giving that much from Bombay. So, he decided again to go to again he wanted to go to back, go back to Delhi and raise funds over there. So, he went to Delhi 
and over there he happened to get a call from external affairs ministry he was surprised and he and they gave him the noc that mr gopal agarwal has sponsored you and this is the noc for you so prabhupad was very surprised that just that one statement to agarwal gave him this so now he had something to go to us so now he applied for the passport with the help of krishna pandit from the chipiwada temple radha krishna temple he helped him to get the passport and prabhupad got the passport on july 26 sorry june 10th june 10th he got the passport and he also requested krishna pandit if he can help for the tickets also but krishna pandit refused to give him the ticket as he said that according to hindu principle the sanyasi should not cross the ocean so i won't be helping you for that reason and that and also the funds were too high for him to fund the tickets so bhakti vedanta swami prabhupad got the sponsorship letter and the passport so he now again went to sumati morarji in bombay and he requested sumati morarji and mr choksi that he can they can help him in getting the fare uh, to U, uh, us but first sumati morarji refused she said that it's so cold out there swami ji will die there it's so cold you are so old and you are you are not in great of your health so please don't go you do your work of finishing shrimad bhagavatam translation here i will give you all all the help you finish your bhagavatam work here only but prabhupad din prabhupad requested pleaded and ultimately she was ready to give her the ticket to us and afterwards prabhupad had to go through many things p form and uh, that p form actually took he had to get the visas also and p form actually took lot of energy of his the visas he got but on 28th of july 1965 he got the visa and p form p form was the permission from the state bank of india that this person has not got get excessive de- debts here so he can go to us so that permission letter that p form was taking lot of time and prabhupad was helped by shrimati morarji and his officers he was staying at the colony of shrimati morarji is an skindia company colony and he tried his best but afterwards after so much of effort he personally went to state bank of india and requested the officer officer refused to give the p form he said your sponsor is a private person and not a institute so we cannot give you the p form but prabhupad said no no you cannot do with this me please take me to your senior and he went to and met the manager over there and that manager actually gave the p form to prabhupad and prabhupad now had everything with him and sumati morarji gave him the good news that on 13th of august a day after baldev appearance balram ji appearance you will be boarding jaladuta from kolkata so prabhupad went to kolkata in train just couple of weeks before on second he reached kolkata third he reached kolkata second he went from bombay to kolkata and after reaching kolkata he didn't find any place to stay even though he had spent all his life there in that city but he was not having space place to stay it was as he written in his vrindavan bhajan i have my wife sons daughters grandsons everything but i have no one no money so they are fruitless glory where have my loving father and mother gone to now and where are all my elders who are my f- folk who will give me news of them tell me tell me who all this is left of this family life is a list of names so out of 100 people in kolkata whom prabhupad knew prabhupad chose shishir bhatacharya he actually called shishir bhatacharya whom he met just one year ago at lucknow at governor's house he requested him to give him a stay at his place and help him to give some classes or lectures in kolkata for a week or so and shishir bhatacharya was so fond of prabhupad and he immediately called him and they both of them he sang and prabhupad spoke 
and they did different programs in different houses in Calcutta before going. And Prabhupada went on 6th of August, he went to Mayapur, took darshan of the Samadhi of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, prayed to his lotus feet and came back on the same day. And then came the day, the day 23rd, 13th of July, 13th of August. Before that, Mr. Bhattacharya, he knew the importance of what Prabhupada was doing. So he actually tried and went to different newspaper and he requested them to, pre -pub uh, to, to put this article in the news that a sannyasi is going to west, the first ever Vaishnava sannyasi is going to west. He went to all the popular newspaper but nobody was willing to print that in their newspaper. Only one newspaper, Dainik Basumati, just print one small article of Prabhupada in our newspaper. He did so much for Prabhupada and ultimately Prabhupada on that day took a taxi. He was little nervous. First time at this age he was traveling. But mere thought of the books was giving him the confidence. He was having 203 volumes of book with him to go to US and that, that was giving him the confidence. In his belongings was only one suitcase, an umbrella and some cereal. That was his belonging. The books were going to come in Cochin from Bombay directly. So then he boarded the Jaladuta. He was having nobody on the shore. Before that, he was having some friends and his, his son Vrindavan who had come till the port and they went back. But on the shore there was nobody to wave him goodbye. Only Mr. Shishir Bhattacharya was there. And he was also nobody to him. He was not a friend, not a disciple, not a relative. He was out of love for Prabhupada. He was there to bid him goodbye on the shore. Okay. And that was this was the day. Today is the day on which Prabhupada boarded Jaladuta. So we should pray to Prabhupada that so much effort and so much he has gone through just to give us these books, give us his books and to preach Krishna consciousness in Western world. Srila Prabhupada ki chai, Srimad Bhagavatam ki chai. Sorry, I am little late.